Hi, I'm Larry Okrand. Welcome to another Handyman Club of America video. We're going to be doing a, a video on cabinet making this time, and we've invited a couple of life members, uh, Roger Cliff and John Kriegshauser, to help us uh, through this one. And uh, Roger is a distinguished teaching professor at Northern Illinois University, and he's also the author of numerous books. John is the director of the architectural model shop at the Illinois Institute of Technology, and he's also a frequent contributor to American How To magazine. Interestingly, John and I were friendly competitors in the cabinet making business about 15 years ago in Kansas City, but have gone our separate paths, but still keep in touch. I understand that we have some examples of cabinets that we're going to be showing members how to build. Uh, maybe, Roger, you could tell us a little bit about that. Well, I'm going to be working with uh, basically the face frame cabinet. I'm mm -hmm. going to make some various parts for that up. And I'm going to be building a Euro style cabinet. Mm -hmm. What sort of uh, tips and uh, tricks are we going to be showing members how to do? I think a lot of layout techniques mm -hmm. and how to make the best use of sheet stock. Mm -hmm. There will also be some gluing secrets, clamping techniques to get things into total alignment. And new materials, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. great. Well, maybe we should go have a look at these cabinets. Good idea. Yeah. Boy, these are, are really nice cabinets. They're obviously purpose-built. Right. This one here is what we call a base cabinet for a kitchen application, and it's got some typical features that you find in, in most kitchen cabinets. For example, we have a distance of 24 front to back, which is standard, and 34 and a half. So then we add the inch and a half kitchen countertop, we have 36. That's a normal height, and that enables us to put the range and dishwashers and so forth under these in the appropriate places. There's also a little projection on this edge so that if we put another cabinet side by side, it joins perfectly at the face frame even if the, the sides can't interfere with each other, even if the wall wanders off. And that's a very important, I think, as far as the design feature. There are two different styles of cabinets here. We have a face frame cabinet and we have a European style cabinet. Well, the Euro style cabinet is also designed for wall hanging. It could be in a kitchen, it could be in a game room where I imagine this would go. As you can see, it has a, a nailer strip up at the top. The entire cabinet will hang from that. It's really not suitable to sit on the floor because it doesn't have a base. One could have been added. And the top is unfinished because it's designed to be above eye level. I know a lot of our members are probably wondering where to start. And uh, it, it's always a little difficult to do that. But the thing that, that you need to do is to measure the area you want to build a cabinet in. But aside from that, you can go to a home center or a, a a neighbor's kitchen for that matter, or look at your own present kitchen. Uh, look how the cabinets are built and, and decide uh, you know, the features that you want to put in and go from there. Yeah, I think not only that, as you look at different people's uh, interpretation and design, you'll see they use materials differently. They make the best of it. They, d they select joinery for purposes and, and that's always interesting to see because I think you learn from that. The other thing is, when you start to plan your work, try to make the best use of your sheet stock. A lot of times, somebody says, well, I'll make it 26 deep, and, and plywood is 48 wide. You're only going to get one cut out of it. So always think in terms of the material. Typically, it's 8 feet long, but you can get 10s and 12s on special order, and that may be beneficial, too, I think. Well, in the end, it all comes down to a drawing. Let's go, look at our drawings. Yeah. Let's go take a look at one. Mm 